Right, so we're looking at the integral between the limits of 1 over root 2 and 1 of arc sine of x divided by x cubed dx. And just remember that arc sine of x, that's just the inverse of sine. Uh, this is the term we actually really want to get rid of. So we're going to start off with the substitution. I'm just going to let y to be equal to arc sine of x. And this is something we can differentiate. So then we get dy is equal to, so this is a standard result. This is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we need a dx here. So now we've got it in terms of a polynomial. This is a bit easier to deal with. So this is a way just to get rid of the arc sine of x. But before subbing in, we need to think about the new limits. So if we just sub in these limits in terms of x to get the corresponding y values, just remember that the arc sine of 1 over root 2, this is equal to pi over 4. So this is because sine of pi over 4, that's equal to 1 over root 2. So pi over 4 in radians, that's the same as 45 degrees. And if we do the same with the top limits, then the arc sine of 1, this is pi over 2, which corresponds to 90 degrees in angles, um, in degrees. Um, and that's just because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So we can just sub these in. So this integral is now between the limits of pi over 4 and pi over 2. And then let's use a substitution. We have uh, the numerator just gets replaced by y. And we, have, we still have the x's in. So I'm just going to leave them in for now. It's not really good maths, but we want to get rid of them later. So we have 1 over x cubed on the bottom. We want to replace the dx by dy. So just imagine bringing this term up to the front. And then we have 1 minus x squared dy. So this isn't very good at the moment because we've got x's and y's in this integral. And we want to express it only in terms of y's. Um, so what we can do, we can use this relationship we had at the start. So we know that y is equal to arc sine of x. But the arc sine of x, that's just the inverse of sine. So we can actually flip this. And if I just write it down here, uh, by definition of arc sine, this is the same as sine of y equals x. So I've just um, imagine applying sine to both sides, then the arc sine and the sine are going to cancel. So then we can replace all the x's by sine of y's. And then we'll have an integral only in terms of one variable. So let's do that. We have the integral between the limits pi over 4 and pi over 2. And then we still have the y. And then we have wherever we see x, we replace it by sine of y. So we have 1 over sine cubed y and then times the square root of 1 minus sine squared of y, dy. And we can actually simplify further. You might remember the Pythagorean identity, which says we can express this as the cosine of y. So that's a nice simplification. This whole term turns into cosine of y. And then I'm just going to uh, rewrite this slightly differently. So I'm gonna, this is the same limits, pi over 4 up to pi over 2. We leave the y. I'm going to write this as 1 over sine squared of y. I'm just going to group it slightly differently. And then we have another sine on the bottom, sine of y. And then as we were saying, this is just cosine of y. And then we have a dy. Now the reason I wrote it like that is because we have cosine of y divided by sine of y. And this is 1 over tan of y. 1 over tan is also known as cot of y. And 1 over sine is known as cosec of y, if you're familiar with those names. So I'm just going to rewrite this um, slightly differently in terms of those names. We have integral of pi over 4 up to pi over 2. y times cosec squared of y. I was just saying cosec is 1 over sine. And then 1 over tan, this is cot. So I'll just write this as cot of y dy. Now, the reason that this integral is nicer than our original integral is because we know some uh, relationships between the derivative of cosec and cot. And we can use those to integrate by parts. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to wipe up the board to make up some more space. So I've just rewritten the integral that we arrived at a second ago. Now, to be able to integrate this, we need to remember a couple of results. So firstly, remember that the derivative of cot of y with respect to y, this is actually equal to minus cosec squared of y. And we also need to know the derivative of cosec. So derivative of cosec of y dy, this is actually equal to minus cosec of y times cot of y. And using these two results, we can actually integrate this term in here. So cosec squared of y times cot of y. So if we can integrate this and we can differentiate y, we can actually use by parts to simplify this. 
So to use the by parts formula, I'm just going to write out u is equal to y. This is what we want to differentiate. And v dashed is equal to this term in the orange bracket, uh, cosec squared of y times cot of y. And this is what we want to integrate. So we know straight away that the derivative of y, that's just 1. And now to integrate this, this is a bit trickier. We need to kind of think backwards using these results. We want to find v. Now think about differentiating cosec squared of y. This isn't the answer, but think about differentiating this. Using the chain rule, we'd have 2 down the front. Then we have cosec y. And we also need the derivative of cosec of y. And we know it's derivative up here. It's cosec of y times cot of y and the minus in front. And this would actually give us uh, the term v dashed up to a constant. So if I just balance the constants, if we write minus 1 over 2 here, then when we differentiate this, the 2 is going to cancel over half and the minuses are going to cancel. And we're going to be left with exactly cosec squared of y cot of y. So this is probably one of the trickiest parts of this question, just being able to see that. But now that we've seen that, we can just use the by parts formula. If you remember, we have the cross term, so u times v, so minus y divided by 2 times cosec squared of y. And this is stuff we've integrated, so we need to put the limits, which is pi over 4 up to pi over 2. And then we have minus the integral of u dash times v. And I can actually bring out the constant minus a half at the front, so bring it to plus a half. And then we just have 1 times cosec squared of y, which is cosec squared of y dy. And we have the limits, same as before, pi over 4 up to pi over 2. And the whole reason we did that is because cosec squared of y is something we can integrate using this relationship up here. So the integral of cosec squared of y is actually going to be minus cot of y. So let's start off by evaluating this bracket. If we put pi over 2 into this function, we have uh, this is equal to minus pi. And then we have another half down here. So this is minus pi over 4 times cosec squared of y. So remember what cosec is. This is 1 over sine. And sine of pi over 2, that's sine of 90 degrees, that's just 1. So we're just going to get with times 1 over 1 squared, which is just 1. And then for the second term, if we put pi over 4, then we have uh, minus pi over 4, but we have another half. So this is pi over 8. And then we have cosec squared of pi over 4. So remember again that sine of pi over 4 this is uh, 1 over root 2. So we have cosec squared, so we need to put another square term. 1 over 1 over root 2 squared. So 1 over root 2 squared, that's 1, that's 1 over half. And then we have 1 over 1 over half, that's just 2. So this whole, this whole fraction is going to simplify to 2. And now, as we we're saying, we can evaluate this integral. This is going to be minus a half times cot of y, just using this relationship up here. And then we also need the limits pi over 4 up to pi over 2. So let's just simplify this first two terms. We have minus pi over 4. And then we have, actually I should have put a double minus here. Yeah, so I had a minus here. And we also had a minus in the function. So this needs to be plus. So this is plus pi over 8 times, we said that this whole term is equal to 2. So we have actually pi over 4. And then minus pi over 4 plus pi over 4, that's just 0. These two terms cancel with each other. So this, this whole first part is equal to 0. And our answer is just going to be what this evaluates to. So now remember that cot of y is 1 over tan. So it's right, 1 over tan. That's what cot is. And we want to evaluate it at pi over 2. The problem is tan isn't uh, defined at pi over 2. So we can't just go ahead and write tan of pi over 2 because that's not really defined, what we can do, this is a limit really. The question is, what is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 of tan of x, 1 over tan of x, essentially that's the problem. And we know just from the graph of tan, it kind of goes up to infinity at pi over 2. So this whole denominator, tan of x, this is going to tend to infinity, and 1 over infinity, that's essentially 0. So this is just being slightly more rigorous, but just to say that if we evaluate pi over 2 into this function, this is actually going to give us 0. So our first term is 0, 
and then we have a minus, but the minus cancels with the minus in the function, so we have plus a half times cot of pi over four. So I just write pi over four. And we can simplify this. So all this stuff is zero. We have a half times one over tan of pi over four. So one over tan pi over four, just from definition. And this is another uh, angle you should remember, tan of pi over four, tan of 45 degrees. This is equal to one. So we have one over one, that's just one. And our answer is one half. So after all those calculations, our answer is just a half.